It's time, everybody. Hey, welcome. It's Scott Beebe with Business on Purpose. The time of this recording is typically on a Monday as it is today. We are delighted to be with you. We've got a powerful story to be able to share with you today on a Monday, and I would be remiss uh, because it is Thanksgiving week here in the United States. So for those of you in the United States, happy Thanksgiving this week. For those of you outside of the United States, we still want to extend to you uh, our um, our sincere gratitude and gratefulness that we have the opportunity to be able to work alongside of you as business owners to be able to help liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. I wanted to share with you a real story. I recently received an email from a client who's a part of our architecture firm Freedom Formula program. It's an architects coaching group, so it's a group just for architects and interior designers. Uh, some to some, it's also known as the Dream Practice Accelerator for architects, interior designers, and engineers alike. And we put them in a group. It's a program that Enoch, Enoch Sears and I have run for about four years now. Kind of hard to believe, but uh, he and I have done this together for about four years. Over 100 architects through the program, literally from around the world, Namibia, Croatia, China, Scotland, United States, Canada, uh, England, just about everywhere. We've had the privilege of being able to work with architects and engineers and interior designers. And we hear regular feedback from our heroic firm owners, and not, not only in that space, but also in general with business owners about the real life challenges that they're facing on a regular basis and the struggles of running a successful firm. So what I wanted to do was give you an honest peek into the life of one such firm owner who was literally about to throw in the towel. And this just came in in the last few weeks, but has been refreshed and recommitted after seeing the simple power of serving her widowed mother. And uh, it's just such an interesting and powerful story. So I'm going to read it to you directly so that you can understand the context of exactly what it is uh, that we're talking about in this. It's so, so powerful. So hang with me. Here we go. Dear Scott Nienick, this is just an email to touch base with you and let you know that I'm still alive. But more importantly, that I had a breakthrough recently. Thanks to the influence of you guys, that has me super excited and pumped to press forward with our company and renew and refresh again. I had hit a bad place, listen to this, I had hit a bad place of uncertainty mid-year that derailed my intentions, initiated at the start of this year when I signed up for your program. I may have shared snippets between Thursday calls and the one-time chat uh, with Enoch that indicated the turmoil and overwhelming state I'd arrived with so much changing so fast in our company, structure, culture, vision, which left David and I very unsure what we wanted out of the business anymore. Vision temporarily lost is what she said. And so you can just kind of feel the frustration that was there uh, when she's writing this. And then listen to what she said here. We began to call into question. We began to call in the question if it made sense to keep Fusion going. That's the name of the firm. Or take our experience, skills, knowledge to an alternative career path as employees somewhere else. So they started to have this back and forth. Should we be employees or should we be business owners? Meanwhile, we continue to be busier than expected this year, but unfortunately not all due to revenue generating business, but rather a considerable amount devoted to troubleshooting and fixing unacceptable or inaccurate work that was performed by team members that were previously here. So there's that employee thing that a lot of you feel sometimes. But it left us plenty of potentially liable mess-ups to follow up and to deal with. Needless to say, the motivation that we had to keep the business going waned even further as I began to evaluate our numbers. Then October rolled around, and suddenly it was time for my almost three-week solo trip to India, booked months ago to visit and to help my mom. Now, this is Alice and her mom, and also Alice's twin brother, who happens to be in uh, OBGYN in Augusta, Georgia, and they were over there uh, together. Now, my mom is a widow. She is re relocated to her birthplace in a beautiful but remote town, and I was there to help her finish out a construction project that she stubbornly started, <laughs> don't you love that, at the age of 85 with the desire to reside on a small lakeside lot of land she inherited next to the chapel she had built over 20 years ago for her community from her retirement savings. 
The place is fairly remote, it's fairly natural, with no internet connection or place. So I'd hoped I'd have plenty of quiet blocks and time to really catch up on the program modules that you and Enoch put out, plus some reading in this potentially peaceful setting. I took the two books you sent us, Prophet First and Emeth, had only half finished the former in January. Implemented immediately, but never finished the book. This was going to be my time to read both. My three weeks flew at a very busy pace as I found myself having to manage union communist mentality labor, taking advantage of a single old lady, having to communicate strictly in a foreign language that I only have basic conversational skills with amidst heavy rainstorms. It kept me so fully busy every day with no energy to read or to think beyond what my mom needed in that moment. But I was there for her primarily, and it was so cool to be able to see that. Accomplished a lot to settle her, left her happy and comfortable and excited that I will be back next month with David and the girls, something for her to look forward to this Christmas. But as I, would, as I boarded the plane on November 11th to head back, I recognized, get this, I was still hungry to gain some clarity and a sense of thoughtful, professional game plan before returning to the United States, but had exhausted time and, quite frankly, exhausted my energy. Not quite ready to give up, I decided to try something I've never succeeded at doing in the past, and that's to stay awake, in flight, and read. I deliberately slept my first four and a half hours from Kochi to Doha Cutter. That refreshed me from my immense fatigue. Then on the second leg in the journey, 14 and a half hours to go before touchdown in Atlanta, I buckled down with Michael Gerber and Emeth. I thought I'd at least get the book started before I returned home to David. Simply put, wow, what a great read. Just a couple of chapters in, and I was hooked. I could relate so much, and every page resonated with sense. I devoured the book cover to cover with no in-flight movies or sleep for 14 hours straight, much to the annoyance of my fellow passengers who probably wanted my light to turn off. But selfishly, I wasn't about to turn it off when so many light bulbs were mentally being triggered as I read on. What a powerful story, isn't it? The book helped me better understand the systematic modules that you have organized for us to, to implement. I feel so stupid for waiting this long to read it. It even inspired me to crack open my notepad and think through a different org chart. Now look, she actually sent her org chart that she sketched out. Now you would expect this obviously from an interior designer and also architects, but this org chart had fresh perspective. I realized the entrepreneur in me was not ready to give up. Not just like that, after more than 16 years of a fairly profitable business, messy and as sloppy as it's been, it didn't matter. I was not ready to give up. So much room for improvement. So much clarity gained. I know fusion can be so much better and stronger, even if maintaining our desire not to get much bigger. I am convinced We've just experienced really painful adolescence. What a great line, right? Really painful adolescence as a company. And I'm so ready to grow up and mature, but recognize the need to reset bad childhood habits and practices first. So I'm ready to implement. I'm ready to implement from the basics again, is what Alice says. And then she says this, the most exciting uh, results of the return of my trip is that I've returned excited and believing in the purpose of my business and in our life's goals again. Isn't that exciting? I've returned excited and believing in the purpose of my business and in our life's goals again. This trip gave me the time to recognize in deep gratitude the many luxuries our small business has provided our family. I want you to have that sense of purpose. Not just the financial means and freedom to travel intentionally as a family every other year, but especially for the blessing to allow me personally to the freedom to take as many trips across the seas to see my, my mother and my parents before my father died. When in 2015, my dad was diagnosed with ALS, he and my mom needed help, and I ended up making five trips to India over the next 12 months, two to three weeks each, the last of which was to bury my father. Had I been an employee anywhere, I would have been fired or had to have quit. Which employer would allow for that kind of time? Or which small company, unsystematic as we were in many ways, could tolerate a COO in absent-minded depression, anger, and grief for the next 12 to 18 months and still generate adequate returns to keep all staff compensated 
while finishing several big projects to full client satisfaction. Somehow that's what my business has afforded and provided for us. The recent years seemed such a blur. They seemed such a blur, so I don't know how we did it, but we did. No doubt, being blessed with a handful of key people on my team is definitely part of the how. But boy, thinking back to the intense stress and toil we've experienced through these last four adolescent years, while it's been a decent business, it could have been so much better. And I know, had I known and implemented then what I'm learning now, I recognize that while the business hasn't been a lucrative one, unfortunately, it has been a blessing in disguise that has afforded us significant and priceless experiences. And I believe it is a purpose for at least a few more years. Now look at this line. So I want to recommit. I want to recommit to my initial intent at the start of 2019 to renew and refresh Fusion AI design. Really thankful to have discovered the architect uh, firm Freedom Formula program to help me guide to accomplishment that intent. Now it's time. I aim to implement. And then to Enoch and I, she says, thank you so much for sharing what you know and doing what you do. What a great story. What a powerful story. So there's three takeaways I want to share with you. Number one, I want you to own where you're at. Wherever you're at right now, at the time of this recording in November, at the end of November, just going into Thanksgiving 2019, where are you at and own it? Is it a good place? Is it a bad place? Is it a clear place? Is it a chaotic place? Own it, wherever it is that you're at. Number two, surround yourself with truth and inspiration. Surround yourself with truth and inspiration, which means you need to be surrounding yourself with truth-filled people and inspiring people. Stop surrounding yourself with people who are going to drive you further and further into that level of chaos, who are going to high-five you on the way into chaos. Stop doing that. Surround yourself with truth and inspiration. And finally, recommit. Recommit. Recommit to your vision. Recommit to your mission. Recommit to your values. And if you don't have those written out, commit right now to write those things out. If you're an architect or a designer, I want you to go to businessofarchitecture.com. Jump in. Look around. See what Enix got there. We can help you. If you're not an architect or a designer, and if you're a business owner, I want you to go to freedom.mybusinessonpurpose.com. Right now, that is the place where we can help you. And there's even resources on our website at mybusinessonpurpose.com. You can get started on your vision story, your delegation roadmap, all right there just from the website. All it's going to take is sure sweat equity. We've done all the hard work on the back end to help give you a runway so that you can recommit. And then, of course, the book, Let Your Business Burn, is there to be able to serve you. So we've got all sorts of resources. You've got no excuse. You've got this inspirational story from Alice that I'm so grateful that she had the courage to be able to share with us. So as we go into Thanksgiving, I want you to to recommit. I want you to surround yourself with people who are truth-filled and inspiring. And I want you to own where you're at. And let's start to build a business that's on purpose. All right, gang, we'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you in the United States.